What's up, Internet? My name is Kyle, back with another video about cameras, tech, and all that good stuff. Today, we are answering a question for the ages, or for the year at least, and that is the title of this video, Is the Sony a6000 worth buying in 2020? Now, before I tell you the answer to that question, I will tell you what the answer was to the question last year. Is the Sony a6000 worth buying in 2019? And the answer was yes, a resounding yes for a bunch of reasons we will get into. Uh, so is it worth buying in 2020? Yeah, it is. It's completely worth buying in 2020. Before I started filming this video, I started thinking to myself, I'm like, what is the A6000 like? It's something that is like, it's like an ageless wonder. It's like Daryl Green, you know, the old football player. Okay, maybe you don't know who Daryl Green is, but let me think of somebody else. Um, Betty White. Betty White, everybody knows her. She's a ageless wonder. She's, well, I mean, she's gotten older. She, I think, wait, well, maybe that's a bad analogy because she does get older. I think she's like 97. The point is, is Betty White is great and the A6000 is great and Dowell Green is great or was great. You get the point. Also, while looking up how old Betty White was, I saw in Google image search, pictures of her when she was younger, which I've never seen in my entire life. Oh my God, Betty White was cute. She was a fox way back in the day. Who would have known? I mean, I guess you could kind of tell, maybe, I don't know, but she was kind of hot. Okay, wait, what was this video about? Okay, let's get back to the topic at hand, A6000. 2020. I think a point to drive home on why the a6000 is still a camera that I recommend to a lot of beginner photographers out there is that it is still being promoted. It is still accessible in stores like Best Buy. It is an Amazon choice on Amazon. Anytime you look, it is just a highly touted and highly recommended camera. If you're thinking about getting an a6000 and you think it's too old or maybe too outdated, go to a Best Buy if you're in the United States any you know electronic retailer and they will probably have an a6000 on the shelf i don't know about you but i don't know of any other electronic item at a store like a best buy that is almost six years old that you can still buy brand new right out of the box i honestly can't think of another item that would be that old that is sold at a store like best buy were like drones even a thing six years ago are any drones from six years ago still relevant i don't think so cue a like drone expert commenting okay so stores like best buy have it on their shelves amazon recommends the heck out of the camera but why is it so highly recommended? And why is it still relevant almost six years past its release date? There are two major reasons why this camera is still relevant. One, it is very cheap. And two, it gives you a lot of features for that cheap price. A camera that is affordable, but also gives you a lot of features is just a recipe for success. And in my opinion, the Sony a6000 is one of the most influential cameras in the past 10 years, probably. I know that's kind of crazy to say about this little mirrorless uh, APS-C camera, but it truly has brought in a bunch of new photographers people into the Sony ecosystem who have then since moved on to full frame. It's a testament to it being available on the shelf at the store when no other camera brand has a camera with this staying power. You watching this video right now is kind of proof of this concept that the Sony a6000 is definitely an awesome camera and it still is six years later. The a6000 has 24 megapixels, which is the same as the 6100, 6300, 6400, 6500, and you guessed it, the 6600. The a6000 has great autofocus. It has less autofocus points than its newer brothers, but it still has way more autofocus points than other DSLR cameras that are in the same price range. Autofocus is smooth, fast, and accurate. The camera can also shoot at 11 frames per second, so it's good for sports. There's also eye 
autofocus in single shot. And then for continuous autofocus, there's face detection, which these are all features that are great to have, especially for beginners or probably most people getting a camera at this price point. Then for video, there is 1080p, great video with a great codec, which you guys are watching right now. I'm using an A6000 with the Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4, and it looks great. It can shoot at 60 frames per second in video at 1080p, which I'm actually shooting at 24 frames per second now. And then it also has great autofocus in video. So it's really a great hybrid camera. Um, I definitely think the video features are a little lacking in you know the year 2020 compared to say its uh, newer brother, the A6100. So right now, as of filming this video, the Sony A6000 is 500 bucks brand new with the kit lens, the 16 to 50 kit lens. The Sony A6100, which like I said, it has better video features. It can shoot 4K, it can shoot 120 frames per second slow-mo, and it has a flip up screen. And last but not least, it has a microphone jack, which is huge if you wanna be like a YouTuber or you know make short films or anything that you require pretty good sound. Um, that is at $750. So that's a difference of $250. So if you want a, you know, more of the newer features out there like 4K and slow-mo and things like that, the 6100 is the cheapest option Sony has for that type of camera. But that's 250 bucks. And we're also only talking about brand new. You're not going to find a Sony A6100 that is used out there. However, the A6000, if you're not afraid of going on eBay or even choosing from the Amazon use section um, or you know Craigslist or something like that, you can get the A6000 for probably 200 something dollars, maybe 300 and then maybe with a couple lenses, probably for 400 bucks or something like that. So it is a really affordable camera. And if you wanna buy it brand new in a store, hold it and see how it feels, see how small it is and everything like that, you can do that too. It's just, it's, it's funny to me because I keep thinking to myself, you know, we are now, like I said before, six years into this camera's life cycle and it is still very relevant in my eyes, especially for beginner photographers, or somebody who wants to get into photography that is on a budget, or somebody who maybe had a DSLR before and doesn't wanna lug around this big, bulky device and wants something that is smaller or you know more accessible, I think the A6000 fits that bill as well. So with all of that said, talking about how cheap the camera is, its accessibility to you know beginners, budget photographers, people looking to ditch the DSLR, and the features and everything it has compared to even cameras that are still coming out as new today, there's no wonder why this camera is stuck around as long as it has. Watch, I'm saying all of this and I'm gonna upload this video. I'm gonna be like super happy with it and then Best Buy is gonna take it off the shelf next week. That would suck. It would be very interesting to see if we go into 2021 and the A6000's just kicking it on the Best Buy shelf like, yo, what's up guys? I'm seven years old, how old are you? Or maybe cameras don't talk to each other when the employees leave. Don't. This isn't Toy Story, I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyways, I think that is it for this video. Kinda got what I wanted to say off my chest about this camera that has served me well for many, many years and is still going to serve me for probably many more years. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys learned a little something or at least had a little fun watching this video. And as always, I will see you guys in the next episode. Later.